Okay, I want to welcome you again to today's uh, lecture. We are going to be discussing about uh, the embedding process. We have discussed a number of processes uh, in the pathology lab. Uh, how we process our tissue from the time we receive it from the reception and all the procedures we take the tissue through till we uh, reach a point of examining it in a microscope so today we are going to look at embedding what we really mean by embedding the different types of embedding materials and why we use them and the significance uh, of embedding uh, our tissue after you have processed it so at the end of this lecture uh, I expect that you will be able uh, to describe the process of embedding uh, and then I also expect that at the end of this lecture you will be able to tell the different embedding media that we use and where they are used and uh, then lastly I also expect you to know something about tissue orientation because when we embed the, uh, the tissue we have to orient the tissue very well so that it can be sectioned well as required so to introduce the topic we define embedding as a process in which the tissue or the specimen are enclosed in a mass of embedding medium using a mold so we have an embedding medium and we are going to I mean we are going to use to embed the tissue and we are going to use a mold later on we shall see different types of mold that we can use of different types and different sizes so one depending on the size of the tissue you have you can choose the size of the mold to use so the reason why we do embed is that we have small pieces of the tissue that we have uh, cut out of the big uh, biopsy that was probably brought in uh, in our previous presentation we talked about uh, we were referring to the breast as a, the example so I want to maintain the same example even in today's uh, lecture so if you, you receive the breast uh, ideally we do not process the entire breast but we shall pick out some parts of the breast which are diagnostically significant that we shall cut out during grossing put in a cassette so all those are the tissues that we are going to take through uh, until we do embedding now these tissues are small uh, the pieces of the tissue that we cut off are small and one they cannot be held properly on the chunk of the microtomonia sectioning there is no way we shall hold them and sometimes they are soft so it will make sectioning very hard so the sole purpose for embedding is to look for a medium which is hard enough and can support this tissue so that it is firm enough and can be sectioned so we use the mold and the embedding medium uh, which in most of the cases we are going to use uh, wax uh, or molten wax to embed the tissue and when it solidifies at room temperature it hardens and it holds our tissue in position and we can be able to section it so various embedding substances uh, are used like for example we have paraffin wax which is commonly used in most of the labs for the reasons we shall see we have celodine we have the synthetic resin gelatin and many others so the choice of the embedding media depends upon the type of the microscope you're going to use we shall see that different microscopes actually like specifically for the electron microscope we shall have to use different embedding media compared to other types of microscope like light microscope where we appreciate the use of paraffin wax so the type of microtome also will also determine which type of embedding media you're going to use and the type of tissue uh, like for example if you are going to use uh, or we are going to embed hard tissues like bones or soft, I mean or soft tissue like liver, we also have to determine the type of embedding media that we are going to be using. So let's look at uh, mention some of the examples of the impregnating media or the embedding media that we have. You remember in our previous lecture we said 
that our impregnating media when we are processing the tissue should actually be the same as the embedding media and the reason we gave was that we do not want to create layers in our tissue block at the end because it can make sectioning difficult when these layers eventually separate so if we have used the paraffin wax during impregnation then it should be the same media that we used to embed so we have uh, some of the media that we use and we have uh, paraffin wax which is very commonly used in most of the labs we have agar agar is also important and most especially it is used during uh, double embedding we shall look at that and see we have gelatin and then we have the low viscous nitro cellulose uh, we have the water soluble uh, wax or what we call the carb wax we mentioned this in our previous lecture and we have uh, celodine and then epoxy resin which we actually use most of the time in electronic microscopy so talking about the paraffin wax this is a solid at room temperature uh, when you find at room temperature it is solid and it has a melting temperature which ranges between 40 to 60 degrees centigrade and for tropical countries like actually has a higher melting point of uh, 56 i mean 58 to 60 is suitable for use reason being our temperatures are a little bit high compared to uh, some countries like in europe so having the paraffin wax you all use all paraffin wax with low melting points may not solidify properly and so it means we may not have a proper tissue block which is hard enough and so it is better that in the tropics we use uh, paraffin wax which has a little bit higher melting points so this is the most commonly used tissue embedding medium uh, in most of the pathology labs so we have another media and this is what we call the carb wax and this we mentioned last time that is water soluble and therefore the tissue are directly transferred to water soluble wax after fixation we do not need to go into the process of dehydration and clearing because already this is miscible with water so we shall just go straight away and impregnate or embed so another type of uh, the embedding medium is what you call the paraplast and this is a mixture of purified paraffin and plastic polymers so it is easy to make the serial section is when we embed uh, our tissue with the paraplast and we can be able to make sections of uh, about four microns with the embedding media due to its elasticity it can helped us to make sections most especially when we are dealing with the tissues which could be very hard and embed in uh, the paraplast because of its elasticity it can actually enable us to make sections uh, thin sections of about four uh, microns so we have another media and this is what we call the ester wax and this one is harder than paraffin wax but has a low melting point of 46 to 48 degrees centigrade and if you can remember in our previous slide we said in the tropic high temperatures and we need to use a paraffin wax at least which has higher melting points and cannot uh, easily melt even when we don't want it to be molten so uh, ester wax it has a low melting point of 46 to 48 degrees so this uh, doesn't make it so much suitable for use in uh, our conditions but it is soluble in alcohols so there is no need for clearing step to embed medium i believe you remember all the steps we talked about during tissue processing and their respective importances so another medium we use is what we call the epox resin and epox resin are used for electron microscopy just like i mentioned before and these epoxy polymers are of uh, erratin uh, differ from uh, the methacrylate in that they are cross-linking which cause the short salt block of uh, aldite to be insoluble in any solvent 
So longer filtration is actually required because the viscosity of resin is greater than that of the methacrylate. So it means we need now to keep our tissue for long in uh, the, me the, the, the medium because it is so viscous and it should take a lot of time for it to penetrate the tissue. Remember, in our previous discussions, we have been di we discussed about the factors which affect tissue processing, and one of them was the viscosity of the fluid that we use to uh, process the tissue. Like for example, if we are fixing uh, the tissue, we prefer uh, to use a fluid which is less viscous because when it is very viscous, when it is thick, the motility of the molecules in that solution will not be high and it will take time for the tissue to be fixed or processed in that uh, respect. So another medium is what we call the agar and like I mentioned in my previous slide, I said agar most of the time is appreciated so much when we do double embedding. We shall look at double embedding and we see but to mention something about double embedding this is when we are going actually to uh, embed a tissue in uh, two using two media and the first one is always agar where we embed the, the tissue first and most especially we look at these tissues which are friable which we can easily lose so if we have uh, these friable tissues we can first embed them in agar and then later we can embed them in uh, uh, in wax in molten wax uh, paraffin wax and then we have a firm uh, block tissue block we need also to appreciate that uh, in as much as we can embed using agar uh, paraffin wax will provide more solid and more harder blocks compared to agar that's why we first actually embed these uh, friable tissues in agar and then later we transfer them to the molten paraffin wax because it will give us a more harder and more uh, stable block so another use for agar embedding is used in uh, the FNAC uh, specimens if you want to uh, make cell blocks so we can as well uh, use the agar to, 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 to embed these friable tissues and then finally uh, transfer re to the molten uh, paraffin wax which will give us more firm and solid medium that will give us very hard blocks. So another medium we have is what we call the solidin media and this is a purified form of nitrocellulose which is soluble in very many solvents and it is suitable for specimens with large hollow cavities which tend to collapse and for harder and dense tissues such as bones and teeth and for long I mean and for large tissue sections or, or like of the hollow embryo so if you have tissues which can easily collapse like we mentioned uh, we can have the like the lung we can have the eyes some which are hollow so we can use seldin because it can penetrate okay advantages of using seldin is that it's it's rubber consistency allows to blocks that are either very hard or of varying consistency to be cut without any due distortion. And then number two, we realize that these dense tissues which are hard to infiltrate, like for example bones and brain and specimens which tend to collapse easily due to air spaces, like we mentioned earlier on, like the eyes and maybe lungs, are supported better with cell in and thereby avoiding the crumbling of the tissue during section. Continuing, it permits cutting of tissue sections which are thicker than paraffin wax and is therefore recommended for processing of neurological tissues. And our next blade, it does not require heat during processing, hence producing minimum shrinkage and tissue distortion especially for cutting large bone sections. It is therefore recommended in cases when minimum shrinkage is required and the frozen section technique cannot actually be done. 
The disadvantages of using salt din is that uh, impregnation is very slow. You need to take a lot of time. Uh, you leave the tissue uh, longer in cell din for it to be able to penetrate the tissue and impregnate it very well. So that's one disadvantage. And we say this is because of its viscosity. And then very thin section advantages. We say it's cell din. Impregnation is very slow and lasting for several days or several weeks and this means we are not going to get results in time and we make the patient wait longer which is not very good so we need to have or to use uh, a medium which can actually penetrate the tissue very quickly so that we can continue processing and give the patient results quickly. And then we realized that the uh, photomicrographs are difficult to obtain when we stain using soldin given its viscosity so it can actually not give us very clear micrographs and blade number three it is very volatile and therefore must be kept in bottles with ground glass toppers to prevent evaporation so another medium is what you call gelatin and gelatin impregnation is rarely used except when dehydration is to be avoided and when tissues uh, to be subjected to histochemical or enzymatic studies. It is very good that it does not actually uh, interfere with the, uh, the chemical constituents of the tissue and so it preserves the proteins and lipids in the tissue which can actually be studied later. It is also used as an embedding media for delicate specimens and frozen tissue sections because it prevents fragmentation of tough and friable tissues when frozen sections are cut. So what are the qualities of an ideal embedding medium? What are the things that you should really consider or take, uh, you need to take serious before you choose which embedding media to use or to buy in your laboratory? So the embedding medium is considered as ideal if it bears the following qualities and number one the melting point of the embedding media is very important and uh, in its pure state it should be uh, below uh, 60 degrees centigrade to avoid damage to the tissue by heating during impregnation because when the tissue I mean when each melting point is very high and it goes above 65 degrees it may end up actually cooking or burning or boiling uh, the tissue and this will have to affect uh, the integrity of the tissue and the enzymes they are denatured by heat so once we expose the tissue to higher temperatures it means we are going to affect it so much and we cannot do some studies on it the embedding medium must also be solidifying at room temperature. So at room temperature we expect it to be solidified and hard. Another point we need to take into consideration is that the embedding medium must penetrate the tissue replacing the fluid in which uh, it is saturated, uh, usually the clearing agent. So just like we mentioned, we remember the, our embedding medium is the same as the impregnating medium. So we mentioned about double embedding and here we need to talk about double embedding. And we say just like the name goes, it is the type of embedding where we use two types of embedding, embedding medium. And uh, particularly this refers to the embedding in which the tissue are first penetrated with a nitrocellulous agar and then embedded in paraffin wax. The goal of this is to produce a block that can be sectioned with uh, a matrix of nitrocellulose in addition to paraffin. And away from that, this is also very important when we need to uh, uh, at least embeds uh, friable uh, tissues which can easily be lost so it can be first embedded in agar and then transferred to uh, paraffin wax so that it can be 
embedded and we get a very firm dish block. Uh, in this image we have examples of double embedding and uh, you can appreciate that when we look, uh, if you look at this uh, block here, we have the inner uh, more white uh, portion of this block. So, and then we have our tissue inside this block. So this tissue is so small and we assume this is one of the friable tissues. So what happened was that it was first embedded in a, in agar, you know, and when you put it in agar, one of the other reasons that we did mention, it will also help us to orient the tissue well. Because some tissues are too small to be oriented in a bigger mold in a lot of molten wax. They may keep changing positions. So to avoid that, we first put them in agar, and then this agar will help us to position or to orient them very well, and finally we put them in a paraffin wax to have a solid block. So the same happens to the rest of the blocks you think. Inside, in the middle of this big block, we have uh, the agar embedded uh, tissue, which is in the middle, and it helps us even to orient the tissue very well. So methods of embedding, we go through the process. So step number one, we open the cassette and check uh, with the requisition form entry to ensure that the correct number of the tissue piece is present. Actually, we need to match before we go on to process the tissue further. All that we need to ensure is that we are actually embedding the right tissue. So we select the mold depending on the size of the tissue we have. And these molds have different uh, sizes. So depending on the size of the tissue you have, you can select a mold. So there should be sufficient room for the tissue with an allowance of at least 2 millimeters surrounding the margin of the tissue because you, we don't want the tissue to be hanging again outside the wax. So you need to fix uh, the tissue at least in the middle of the mold and there should be space of at least 2 millimeters surrounding uh, uh, the simple glossed wall or floor tiles may also be used in place of glass plate in just in case you don't have so what happens next is that you fill the mold with paraffin wax and after putting the paraffin wax in the mold uh, using a warm forcep you select the tissue carefully uh, you pick the tissue without crushing in it uh, you don't break it you don't pinch it because we may lose some parts of interest so taking care that it does not cool in the air so the process has to be fast you have to transfer it very fast from the cassette and then you transfer it in the mold which is having molten uh, wax so in case you're using uh, the old model of the molds or what you call the lookout molds or the oil molds you can you may apply glycerin on the sides of the mold uh, so that when you actually are removing your block it does not get stuck there completely but this is an old-fashioned uh, mold which was used some time back so place the tissue in the mold uh, according to the side to be sectioned and according to this procedure the side which is supposed to be sectioned i mean sectioned will force will face at the bottom will face downward in the mold so this side should be facing down against the mold and a small amount of pressure may be used in order to have more or even embedding so once you place your tissue in the mold where you have added the molten wax at least you can use some little pressure just to, to make sure that the surface which is to be cut lies at least horizontally flat on the side of the, the mold because that's the side which is going to face the blade first so you chill the mold on the cold plate orienting the tissue and firming it on the wax uh, with warm forceps 
So to ensure that the correct orientation is maintained and the tissue uh, phase to be sectioned is kept flat, uh, you need to apply some pressure, just like I said. So you insert the identifying label in place uh, and label the embedding ring or cassette based on the mold. We cannot forget to do the labeling because this is very important. If we, we need to label our uh, cassettes very well so that we keep track of our samples and not uh, misallocated to, to some other patient. So hold the block on the cold plate and after it has solidified you remove the block from the mold and cross check the block very well to see whether it is uh, well labeled. And this label we're talking about, it is going to be on the cassette. You check very well to see whether the cassette is well labeled, and whatever is there is matching with uh, what is on the uh, request form. So, moving on, we look at the type of, of molds we use. So, like we mentioned before, we, we used to use these molds most of the time, but uh, new designs of molds have come up that we can use so these are the look at molds or uh, commonly referred to as the old molds and they are adjusted according to the shape and size so when you look at them if uh, if you look at this mold they are always made of of two l-shaped parts and they can be adjusted depending on the size of the tissue have so like for example if we take this part we are putting the cursor it can be either pushed uh, pull, this part can begin from the middle of this one and then it will take up uh, a size let me think let me get the pointer and then we see so in the case of this one I'm just assuming we have a smaller tissue that we need to embed so we need to reduce the size of the mold. So we shall pick this part of the mold and instead of it beginning from here, it shall possibly start from here and then come like this. So we shall have this part here as uh, where we are going to put our tissue and then pour the wax. So they are also of different sizes and they can be adjusted accordingly depending on the size of the tissue you have. But we have other types of uh, molds and now the most commonly used uh, mold is this real metallic mold it is easy to clean it can be purged well and can be used as many times as uh, you can it is a clean and then they are also of different sizes if we look at this mold it has a larger space in here uh, this one also has a larger space even this one has a large space till you get a small one so if you have very tiny tissue pieces of the tissue that you need to uh, embed I think this would be the best you can it's not advisable you put them here reason being it may be hard for you to orient or to keep them in one position and yet remember we talked about uh, orientation of the tissues and we said for these small pieces at least it's better they are put together and put in the same place so uh, imagine putting these small small pieces of the tissue in uh, molten wax which is now put in this mold they can keep separating and make it difficult for you to put them in one place so away from that we also have the pvc disposal molds uh, but the most preferable one uh, the reusable metallic molds and those are the ones which are actually commonly used so briefly let's talk about the orientation of different tissue because this is very important when we embed we have to make sure we orient the tissues in the most appropriate way because it is going to affect in the end on the interpretation of results and the examination of the slides so during embedding orientation of the tissue is very important and the correcting orientation of tissue in a mold is the most important step in embedding though it is almost done uh, towards the end incorrect placement of tissues may result into diagnostically important tissue elements being missed out 
or damaged during a microtomy. So we need to put this in mind that we need really to expose all the surfaces of interest. Like for example, in this image, if you have uh, tubular uh, tissue, uh, a tissue which is in the type in the form of a tube, at least you have to orient the tissue in a transverse way. And the reason is that when uh, we section, the section must be able to expose all the layers of the tissue that we have uh, embedded. Because if it doesn't and it only exposes one uh, part of, or one layer of the, the tissue, then we may not uh, know whether, for example, if the cancer has infiltrated the other layers, we may only see it in one part or one, uh, one layer and may think it is only there when it has actually moved in different layers. So if you have a tubular uh, tissue, it is advisable or it must be actually oriented uh, transversally like this and if it is a skin we must also orient it in the mold in this way so in this way we are ensuring that all the layers from the superficial layer deep to the dermis all layers are exposed so we can be able to see whether uh, the cancer or the lesion has moved from one layer to another so that's the point so we need to expose all the regions and we mentioned that when we have uh, small small pieces of the tissue like keratins so it is better we put them in the center hmm? we put them in the center and we keep them there that's why we are looking for a mold which had uh, uh, i'll talk about this mold here if you have those small ones you can either put them here or put them here because they can be easily centralized and kept there and if you have long tissue, the, it is better they are oriented uh, diagonally. And if it is an intestine, you make sure all layers are exposed. How? The intestines are big, so it is always advisable that you open it and then when you orient it, it is oriented in a way that when it is cut, all layers should be uh, exposed. And then if you have a membrane, the Swiss roll orientation would be the best. So during, during embedding, it is important to orient the tissue in a way that will provide the best information to the pathologist. Embedding should be done according to the type of the tissue. So once you get uh, a cassette and you're going to embed, that's why it is always important to have the request form with you and then you know which type of tissue you're embedding, where did it come from, and will guide you on how to orient the tissue. So the requisition form should always be read during embedding for proper orientation because that's the information of the tissue and where it was got from. General considerations, elongated tissue are placed diagonally and then we are seeing tubular or displacement such as vas deferens cysts and the gastrointestinal tissue are embedded so as to provide a transverse section showing all tissue layers. And then we need to ensure that tissues with an epithelial surface uh, such as skin are also embedded to provide sections in a plane at a right angles to the surface. What we are meaning, the hair or the keratinized epithelia are oriented to face the knife uh, diagonally at least. So usually tissues are embedded with the surface to be cut facing down in the mold. So multiple tissue pieces are aligned across a lower axis of the mold and not placed out randomly. Incorrect placement of tissue may result in the agonistically important tissue elements being missed out like I mentioned before or damaged during microtomy so we need to put that in mind. So in circumstances where precise orientation is essential, uh, tissue should be marked or agar double embedded. We talked about marking of this tissue using uh, ink. We can ink the margins, which can also help us uh, to know how to orient our tissue.
very well. We talked about this in my previous lecture. For those who followed me and those who didn't follow, you can uh, look for it in my videos and you'll find uh, how we, we label or how we ink the tissue. I discussed this during the lecture about grossing. So embedding is the process in which uh, the tissue or specimen are enclosed in a mass of embedding medium using a mold and uh, we need also to know that embedding medium and uh, supporting medium into which the tissue block are embedded. These are key points that you need to take and we also need to note that various embedding substances such as paraffin wax, cell did synthetic resin, gelatin are used depending on the type of microscope, the type of microtome and also the type of tissue that you are going to embed. We also need to note that uh, epoxy resin is used specifically for electron microscopy and then we also need to appreciate that agar embedding is used most especially in double embedding and then in the FNAC specimens when you need to make cell blocks and also we need to appreciate that cell DIN media is used for cutting hard tissue and gelatin is used when frozen sections are required on friable tissues. So we also need to appreciate that a variety of molds are used for embedding like those we have looked at. We have seen the disposable one, the PVC, we have looked at the L or the Lucard molds, we have seen uh, the metallic reusable molds and yeah, there are other plastic molds which can also be used. So various substances can be added uh, to paraffin wax in order to modify its, consist its consistency and the melting point to improve on its efficiency and these are the ones we call additives. You remember we said uh, along the tropics or countries around the tropics we need to have wax which has at least higher melting point than uh, the 46 to 56 melting point because of the high temperatures we have in our region so it may not harden so well if we have molten wax I mean or we have paraffin wax which can melt between 40 and 46 degrees so sometimes our temperatures can shoot high and reach such higher temperature so we need one with a higher melting point so that it is kept solid at room temperature so altives increase the hardiness of the block and then we also need to appreciate that the correct orientation of the tissue in a mold is the most important step in embedding process so this brings us to the end of our lecture for today i want to thank you for always taking your time to watch uh, this video for those who are going to watch it on YouTube and like I encourage you to share like and subscribe uh, to this YouTube channel so that next time when I share another video you can be able to see the video first and uh, share it with other people that you want to see it also otherwise uh, I wish you the best for now and allow me to say bye